everybody. Uh, maybe it's better if I hold it over here. I get a little better. I don't have the glare. Glare? Get out of the window. I don't have the glare that... <laughs> you know, I can't... It sounds like someone's outside with a very big stapler stapling something. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of whatever this is. Uh, <laughs> I think oh, I think this is going to be another IMO retro review. Um, because it's not a throwback. Throwback, I, like I said, I think I said in the last video that I want to keep those for like older, older movies. Like pre-2000. <clears throat> And uh, although this is, this is close, just like Neighbors was close, uh, 2002, and uh, uh, Goldmember was, uh, was that 2001? Or, I, I'm, I, I, don't matter, we're talking about this. Um, yeah, I was, I, you know, I, I love gaming. Um, I've always been a gamer since the mid 90s you know pc gamer playing alone in the dark and all those others resident evil and um i i recently i've i i'm one of my it may it may be my favorite games of all time until they come up with something better is uh alien um isolation which really, really captures the essence of the original Ridley Scott Alien film. This is going to be a long review. Uh, and uh, I love just being in that universe, and I've started playing it again recently on the Nightmare Mode, even though I played it three times through already. Uh, once, maybe four times, once by myself, wants to um, record it for my game channel. Game channel, look for it over here. And uh, a second time I restarted it because I, when I started the one on my game channel, it was right in the middle of the game and I played it to the end. And I wanted to record the beginning, so I pl started playing it again, and then I finished it. Uh, and now I'm playing it again on the nightmare mode, just to see if I can. So I played that game quite a bit so far, and I just love being in that universe. Um, so, uh, t this afternoon, it's Friday afternoon, um... I got to go to work for an overnight shift. Wow, I keep moving it. For an overnight shift, which is what I do every uh, Friday night, I figured, you know, let me let me throw in AVP, Alien vs. Predator, which is one of the very first Blu-rays I ever bought, probably within the first two or three months of me getting a Blu-ray player. I bought the, the double set, which is showcased in the A videos of my Defending My Collection videos. Um, and I haven't seen, I really haven't seen any of those movies since I bought those discs. So I felt it was, it, I just wanted, and I know I could go back to the Ridley Scott, and I will, and I'll go back to the, you know, the, the Cameron, and uh, who's the Asian guy, uh, the Fincher, and then the, the, not the Asian guy, but the French uh, with Pinion, you know, in the wheelchair, and Ron uh, Perlman, and I'll watch all those again. I've seen those a bunch of times, but this movie I only watched once. Alien vs. Predator. Not Requiem, but the first one. And I figured, you know, let me give it a chance. Uh, there was a fleeting, floating, fleeting memory of me kind of liking this movie and I figured let, let me watch it again I'm kind of in the mood for an alien movie and um, so I just finished it and 
Wow, I, I like it more than I thought I ever did. Um, and, you know, let me get this right out of the way, right at the beginning. Uh, I got to the end credits, and the first thing that pops up is directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. Uh, yeah, he is not, he is not too loved in the filmmaking community, although I do like, um, uh, what's the one with Sam Neill, Event Horizon. I do like that, and I am, I do have guilty, uh, eh, I do have a guilty pleasure for all the Resident Evil movies, all of them. Even the second one, as bad as it is, I just love that big lumbering thing at walking through the city. Um, and then the last two that have been released uh, were in 3D, so I love those because the 3D really affected it. I seen Red Letter uh, Red Letter Media do a like a reaction video to one of the last two, I think it was the first of the last two movies, and they were just bashing it to hell. And, you know, guys, not that they're watching this, but guys, if you saw it in 3D, the 3D really made the mouth and the effects look, even though, you know, you know that's CGI, it's not that good. But, you know, it made it better. The 3D made it better. And I can't wait for the last version, uh, or the last movie, uh, whatever it's called. They released a trailer uh, a bunch of weeks ago or a month ago. And it looks really good. Mila Jojovich, come on. Mm -hmm. Lilu, everybody wants a Lilu, don't they? Um, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope they don't do a Fifth Element 2 or remake that thing. It's such a great movie. Anyway, um, so yeah, I found out Paul W.S. Anderson directed this. And at the very end when I saw that, I was like, oh, I kind of understand now why it got a lot of bad rap. Um, you know, because it's not that bad of a movie. Maybe... Maybe, and I'll say this, maybe when it first came out at the theaters and everybody was expecting Alien and Predator fighting together, you know, it was going to be a different type of movie. And uh, the storyline that they did, I, I remember reading the comic. The comic was really good, I thought. And uh, they also kind of touch on the ending of this one where the the female human teams up with one of the predators to defeat the predators at the end and they invite her to come with them uh i really like that comic that comic was kind of cool uh but that was way before this movie came out so this movie came out and uh i think a lot of people were expecting something different and they uh, they just started bashing it. They just bashed it to hell. And being that Anderson directed it, they had reason to really bash it to hell. Because people hated the Resident Evil movies. They hated Event Horizon when it first came out. And all the other stuff he did, whatever he did, because I don't have IMDb at my fingertips, so I can't tell you. But... Um, uh, he 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 got the the dome over him as one of the worst directors of all time, like Uwe Boll, um, who has retired. Bye, see ya. Never liked any of your movies, although I only saw maybe two of them. Maybe I need to see more to kind of appreciate your filmmaking style. But I only saw two of them, and I didn't care for them. So see you later, Uwe Boll. Anyway. Um, so Anderson is still out there making movies, along with Mila Jojovich. So, so be it. It's great. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, I like the story of this. I thought it was really kind of cool bringing Lance Hendrickson back as Bishop Utani. Uh, no, Wayland. Ugh, Utani doesn't come in until the next movie. Wayland, uh... Uh, who, <laughs> Bishop Wayland, I think that's, because they had a cover of Time Magazine or something, and it was like, 
the Wayland Corporation, and it said Bishop. So it was like, is it is his first name Bishop? I always thought his last name was Bishop. I don't know. I don't know. I was watching the movie, and it just went by. But it was cool. It was cool to watch this, this group of people get gathered together by him to dig down to a supposed pyramid, uh, a mysterious uh, a find, and we we find out that it's already been dug through because the predators use this spot and have used this spot for their hunting practices uh, for years and years and years. And I think it's every hundred years they send uh, these predator youngins down to uh, uh, fight with the aliens to become men in the predator community. <laughs> That's the lamest way I can say it, but I said it. Uh, and uh, so these these people, this exploration team, pretty much gets caught right in the middle of this all and it turns out the pyramid is all like you know that when they take the guns it's all indiana jones it's a maze and every 10 minutes it changes and walls move and floors move and ceilings move and it separates the group and and pretty fast all the group gets wiped out by the aliens and the predators oh the aliens are there because they have a queen frozen hidden Every every ten year, ten years, no, every hundred years, they release the queen so she can lay eggs to gestate into aliens so they can go down and hunt them. Um, so yeah, so there's a queen that's that's uh, in bondage and um, laying eggs. And <sighs> let me just jump into what I don't like about the movie. I don't like that. They rushed the gestation uh, um, of when you get a face hugger on your face, the chest bur burster comes out immediately. And then within like five minutes, it becomes a full grown alien. It seems like that's what they've done. And I really don't care for that. Um, because of the fastness of it, but I guess because of the story, or Paul Anderson, they said, well, let's just get on with it. Let's move it, you know, because we can't wait a day. We can't wait a week. These people are down there now. Let's just move it along. And then it made me start thinking about the original movie, Alien, the Ridley Scott film with Scorny Weaver and all the other great people, Tom Skerritt. And, uh, anyway, um, when... When the face hugger was on the guy they brought back from the derelict ship, we don't know the time frame where they were having dinner. The, the chest burster came out. They went looking for it with the cattle prod, and all of a sudden there was a big alien. So I always thought it took a long time, but... When I started thinking back on the original Alien movie, I was like, well, maybe the Alien movie takes place all in like 24 hours. And it might. I, I really don't know, but it's making me think that now. Uh, I need to rewatch Alien, the Ridley Scott original film. So uh, maybe, maybe they were right. Maybe that is how fast everything goes. But... Um, Anyway, let's let me. Yeah, they all get wiped out, and even Waylon gets wiped out. And uh, Lance Hendrickson, Hendrickson, he he's he's a great uh, genre actor. He's been in so much stuff. The television series Millennium was really cool. Uh, that has yet to get a Blu-ray release. I wish it did. A nice remastering with a bunch of extras and commentaries. He's still around, so let's do some of that. Um, but uh, and 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 there's a new movie that has been in production for a long time called "Bring Me the Head of Lance Hendrickson." Look it up. Uh, Tim Thomerson is a part of it, and 
for the last bunch of years at movie conventions, they've always talked about this movie, and I would love to see it. So just do a search for Bring Me the Ahead of Lance Henriksen, and you'll see... Uh, what I'm talking about there. But anyway, so at near the end of this thing, it gets very much like the comic where the last surviving female uh, kind of teams up with the last predator that is alive and uh, gets the war scar and uh, the pre it, it, it there was such a cool scene between the two of them speechless, of course, uh, where the predator pretty much shows that the acid of the alien can burn anything, but it won't burn the alien shell at all, and pretty much creates a spear that has the skull of the alien on it, and um, it, 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 and then... <laughs> And then there's a big fight at the end. And I I really, really liked it. Uh, there, you know, there there are some some people out there that'll go, no, this is stupid. This sucks. But there's a lot of hero shots with them, especially when he drops the bomb in the nest. Uh, the predator drops the bomb and the two of them have to escape. And there's the hero shot of them running and there's flames behind them. And then they got to go up the, the hole uh, because it, they're, they're thousands of miles down below the earth in this pyramid. And they got to get to the surface and they're rushing there and the flames are coming. And then when they get to the top, the queen breaks out. Which is another kind of cool thing because uh, the queen was, like I said, in bondage. It was it was all chained up, but the aliens came around and they started sacrificing themselves, cutting themselves, and dripping acid through blood on the shackles of the queen to let the queen free. That was really cool. Um, Oh, going back, there is one really, really good fight with an alien versus a predator, which uh, uh, grants its name, I guess. Um, and uh, that alien stays around for a while. There's a net that forms uh, on the on the head case, the skull, uh, because the net is like an, the predator net that he shoots is kind of like an acid thing that burns into the person. We saw that, we see that in a human in an earlier part. And then we see that alien pretty much near the end where it's got the crisscross of the, the net on its head. Um, but anyway, at the very end, yeah, there, there's a battle between the, the alien and the human the, uh, that has become now a warrior thanks to the alien or, or thanks to the predator. Uh, they're like a team. And um, yeah, I'm not going to say what happens, but yeah, they fight the queen. And, and then nom 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 and then we're at the end credits and i just want to say i i at the end of it i was i was like that wasn't bad that really wasn't too bad it wasn't as bad as bad as everybody was saying it was now requiem i'm going to visit requiem very soon and all i remember from requiem is kids died and that it was very dark, and you couldn't see a lot of the stuff that was going on in the movie. But, uh, oh, another thing is the version I watched of Alien vs. Predator is the unrated version, uh, which has quite a bit of gore. It's CGI gore, you know, CGI blood and all that. But, uh, oh, and there's a lot of flying... <laughs> There's a lot of flying that doesn't need to be there. When the facehuggers break out of the eggs and they jump through the 
through the air and they're flying across to get a excuse me to get onto the predators or the people a lot of flying through the air and then there's some predators jumping and flying through the air uh, there's a lot of that which is kind of like so there's a lot of good there's a lot of bad but on the whole as Dr. Evil would say and Dr. Evil Jr. would say, yes, Preparation H is a good thing on the whole. <laughs> it's a fun movie. It, it, hey, fuck, it's... I swore. Oh, my God, they're going to ban me. They're going to tear this video down. Oh, my God, because I used a four-letter word. Fuck, it's a pretty damn good movie. Give it another watch. Um, just, just forget about all what you remembered. I mean, again, it's, it's, uh, it's not a great movie, but it's, it's very adequate and it's, um, it's pretty entertaining. I'll just say that. So I enjoyed it watching it again after, all these years, only watching it when I first got it, which is probably 2004, 2005, 2006, around that time when I watched it. So anyway, it's all Roger D on Channel Downstar with a um, IMO Retro review. Uh, please check out my other videos, check out my game channel, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right, bye-bye. Thank you.